Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Ray and I'm going to continue trying to dispel some um, crazy pet food marketing myths that have started circulating. Um, I didn't even realize they were myths because some of these things as a veterinary practitioner never even crossed my mind because I'm familiar with the data and I practice every day and so when I hear things like this to me they're like oh that's just simply crazy that just doesn't make any sense because it's so far from reality that I live in but I realize a lot of you guys don't live in my reality you don't see the things that I see you don't see the number of patients that I see and so um, when you hear some of these myths it it doesn't click to you that they are just absolutely absurd and so I'm going to try to help you in that department um, and I'm going to do my best to show you some data and literature that help back up my clinical experience. Um, I just recently did a video of someone that was being scared that green tea in cat food was causing hyperthyroidism. And you can check that video out. And that is completely false and makes no biological um, or pathophysiology sense whatsoever. And so if you are concerned about that, you can check out that video. But today we're going to be talking about and this is going to be really short and really brief, but we're going to be talking about um, the current marketing ploy to push people to feeding fresh food or raw food um, because dogs are living shorter. <laughs> so kibble, since the invention of kibble, dogs' lives are, are, are shorter. Um, and so I'm going to preface this with saying I really don't care what form of food that you feed your pet, honestly. Um, if you have a strong inclination or a strong urge in your heart to feed a freshly or gently cooked or baked or whatever you want to call it diet, it really doesn't matter to me as long as it's balanced. That, that really is my only benefit. I'm not a fan of raw because of some of the um, contamination issues and we're constantly seeing recalls on um, raw diets and there's a public health risk. But if you're doing that um, in the context of, you know, care with your veterinarian, you have that relationship and, you know, an illness occurs and you guys deal with it, that's fine. I really don't care about the formulation. Balanced, a balanced diet is the most important to me. So we're just going to preface it, press, preface it with that. Um, I mainly want to focus on um, showing you guys maybe a different light in this this myth that dogs are living shorter um, because it's not it's not true. And so. Every time someone tells me these things or repeats one of these things, which is clearly a marketing a marketing ploy thing, um, I always say, well, where, you know, can you show me the paper? Can you show me the data where that is coming from? And it always is, well, I heard it here. I heard it there. I heard it on this website. I read it on this message board. And it's that telephone thing, you know, that game you play um, when your kids where something is said and then it's said to someone else and said to someone else and said to someone else. And then before you know it, it's, you know, it's, it's true. Um, but it's completely inaccurate and it's only true because it's been, you know, manipulated and repeated many, many times in an incorrect, you know, an incorrect iteration. And so um, I want to try to point you to the most recent um, actual data that I can. And if I'm incorrect and there's data out there, real data and, and not <laughs> some, some people say, well, the AKC website or something like that. That's not a real, that's not real data, not a real study. OK, we're talking about actual um clinical data, um, I'm going to try to show you something that is up to date, and this is up to date as of January 31st, 2024, um, and so this is pretty up to date because it's only February 24th, um, 2025, so within a year here, um, the data of how long um, dogs are actually living and is it is it shrinking, and so I'm going to pop up here on the screen. This publication from um, the American Veterinary Medical Association, and the title of the article is "How Can We Achieve More Accurate Reporting of Average Dog Lifespan?" Um, and that's that's important too because we we recently just had this crazy um, Guinness Book of World Records dog live to like 31 years old, and then it was completely found to be false because they're reporting um, self-reporting and all that, and and you know. That is part of the fallacy. I have people all the time um, that come into my clinic and the, and the conversation will start out one way and, oh my gosh, yeah, my dog is so old. I'm doing so good. My dog is 82 years old. Can you believe it, doc? And I'm like, eh, I don't know if I believe your dog's 82 years old, but if your dog's 82 years old, then we probably should be doing some blood work because that's when things start going wrong. Um, and then all of a sudden, when we start talking about um, age-related blood work and things, it goes to, oh, well, you know what? Maybe they're only four. And so age, if, if age can change in the conversation of my appointment, my 
15 minute appointment. Um, if the age can change dramatically just based on um, you know personal feelings at the moment, you better believe that there are probably some um, there are probably some um, data skewing going on by reporters um, in some of these in some of these articles. And so um, that's kind of what this this is talking about. Now you can just read. Oh my gosh. My phone keeps beeping. Um, it, you can see this is, you can read the abstract and a lot of people will just read the abstract, but it's really important to read the entire um, article. And reading articles and reading scientific papers is actually a class on its own. It's not something that I expect you just to be able to pick up and do. There are a lot of nuances and there's a lot of things that are done. People are saying, oh, well, the data is skewed and things like that. Um, well, if you know how to read a research paper, then you know how to pick up on things like skewed data um, and holes. And so, um, if you if you're really into this, um, I really suggest there are probably some online classes. I'm sure you know there may be some skill shares or something where you can actually learn how to read scientific papers. Um, but for those of you that don't and you just want to you know look at the abstract, you can do that. Um, but basically, what this is saying is. Um, there is a lot of inconsistency in how data is collected and how it is reported. And so inherently, anytime you do these type of studies, there is going to be some, um, there's going to be some discrepancies there that you have to kind of read, you know, you have to kind of evaluate um, as a whole rather than just take the numbers. But um, they did take a, um, examination of different kinds of dogs and they did some mortality mortality studies um, and they did that covering a span of about 40 years so they took data from 1981 to 2023 so that they could find and calculate the median lifespan of domesticated dogs and figure out whether or not that is actually going down like some of these um, marketing companies are suggesting and they found out that it it did not um, and so as you can read here, it says, it seems apparent that the median lifespan of domestic dogs has not recently decreased as has been reported in the popular press, but rather has increased steadily over um, that, time frame, that time frame. And so just as I suspected, because clinically I see this, I've been practicing for um, 15 years as a veterinarian and then longer than that, I've been in the profession you know, from my volunteering days and my college work days and high school work days, um, I can tell you that dogs are absolutely living longer. It would it was very rare for us to see dogs in the teens. We see dogs in the teens all the time now, even getting up into the twenties. And so I just knew clinically when this was being thrown around that dogs were living shorter. I just knew from my clinical experience that that was absolutely not true. Um, you know, never was doing um, geriatric wellness exams. I do geriatric wellness exams all the time now. And it may be the dogs are living longer. Again, we have to think about it. It may be the dogs are actually living longer or people are more in tune that geriatric dogs need to come to the vet. I'm not sure. Um, but I can tell you for a fact that I definitely am seeing um, the lifespan of dogs clinically. I'm seeing more older dogs than I used to see before. And so, you know, when I started hearing this, dogs are living shorter. I was just flabbergasted like that. And it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But it's nice to have these studies that show, um, you know, actually show that that is not, is, is not correct. Okay, so if you, yeah, so if you want to go ahead and read this entire study, you can, um, but this is the most recent one, um, you know, pointing to the fact that, you know, dogs are not living, uh, are not living short enough. There's a more recent paper or a more compelling paper that suggests otherwise, definitely post it and, and we can, we can go through those because I'm absolutely, um, you know, willing to, to do that, but I did quite a few <laughs> bit of not hours, but quite a bit of time. I'm trying to re re review this and going through various message boards and things through my veterinary professional um, access that maybe you guys don't. And I could not find, I could not find anything um, that shows that dogs are living shorter. In fact, everything was absolutely the opposite. So, um, you know, so that's that. Now, the second part of the question that I got is, um, and I think this is interesting because they absolutely, um, they absolutely, they absolutely go hand in hand is um, dogs these days are getting more cancer. Um, and then of course, you know, because this is about pet food and these are pet food marketing companies that are putting this information out. Um, of course, they're getting more cancer because um, of, kib of kibble. So they're, they're living shorter lives. And, and then on top of that, and they're living shorter lives because they're getting um, cancer from the pet foods. Um, there's absolutely no data to suggest that. Um, if you have a study, again, if you're one of these people that um, you know, feel really positively about this and it is something that you're really concerned about and you've done some research beyond what I've been able to do, and you have that study that says that um, pet that, that pet food uh, is, is causing cancer in dogs, please show me that because there is absolutely nothing that I have been able to found 
find to do to um, find that substantiates that. Um, but what I can tell you is because animals, as we have just established, are living longer, um, they are getting more cancers. And that absolutely is true. The other thing is we are able to detect cancer um, a lot more efficiently than we were 40 years ago, for sure. Um, the updates in cancer research and veterinary medicine have exponentially increased um, all the way down to the fact that as veterinarians now, we can, and this is pretty amazing, you can have a lump on your dog, I can do a fine needle aspirin in my clinic, um, I can use a special microscope that digitally sends pictures to a pathologist and they can tell me right there um, if that is a tumor that is cancer or not. And so the advances, the more you test and the more accurate testing you have, yes, the instances are going to go up. Um, and that's just the reality of the situation. It does not mean that there are more dogs that get cancer now. It just means that there are more dogs that we are able to test and more dogs that we are able to actually find it rather than saying, oh, my dog died and we have no idea why they died um, because we know, you know, we know now a lot of times why that is. Um, and so I don't think that I don't disagree that we are seeing more cancer in dogs. I think that we are seeing more cancer in dogs because we are better at. Um, a, more people are bringing their dogs into the vet than they did 40 years ago. Um, they're paying more attention to their dog than they did 40 years ago. 40 years ago, you know, most of the dogs, you know, were outside dogs. And if they died in the backyard at night, nobody, you know, sadly enough, you know, people may not have even noticed or cared. And, you know, they buried the dog and that was it. They didn't take the dog to the vet for multiple checkups. And certainly they weren't, um, you know, making sure that um, there weren't any lumps or bumps or having those biopsied. And so um, it's very important to look at things with reason um, and actually challenge in a respectful way maybe some of these um, things that just seem to be crazy. That's how I feel about it. When I look at these things, I'm like, well, that's just absolutely... <laughs> That's just absolutely contrary to everything that I'm physically seeing um, in my daily practice. So I just wanted to just spell those two myths because I think they're very detrimental and I don't like the fear mongering um, and scare tactics that are being used to try to um, almost force people into an opinion um, and then not and then not back that up with any information. So I just wanted to give you, I'm going to post um, two articles here that you guys can read, um, you know, and just have that information as you're forming your conclusions. Again, I'm not a proponent to anything. You know, I think if a diet is balanced, I'm happy with it. I just don't want you to feel forced into one way or the other um, and be extremely confused because um, I can see why it could be confusing because it is, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So I just wanted to hop on here and give you guys some fresh perspective and um, let me hear your thoughts. Bye.